Hello everybody, welcome to Fat Buddies, your favorite FIFA Ultimate Team trading podcast. <laughs> Here with Jake, our trading expert. How are you, Jake? What can you tell us about what's happening now in Ultimate Team? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's a Thursday, which tends to be a really good day for traders. So the market's rising really nicely so far today. Uh, it's actually taking a little bit of a dip right now from some marquee matchup supply, but the market's done really well today on some of the most meta cards, and we're always happy to see that so we can make some profit. And we have on our screen here the first Rule Breakers team, which has been a really unique and new promo. I like that EA is switching things up on us, and if you guys were here for the last podcast, uh, mm -hmm. we kind of guessed what they would do. I said maybe they're going to upgrade some stats, downgrade some others, and it looks like they did do that, and... It made some cards that were not meta, more meta, like this Andre Laporte got more pace, for example. Uh, Costa has a lot more finishing. Um, yeah, just some really good options. So some improved cards, but not super overpowered, which I love. And I know some people might look at this team as kind of lackluster, but I think that's what EA tried to do intentionally this year was slow the progression system instead of having so many huge upgraded cards early in the year. They're mm -hmm. slowing it. They're they're slowing it down by uh, doing methods like this where they don't fully stat boost cards, but some stats actually went down. But like for example, this Kane, he's he's incredible. His stats are incredible now, and he's holding a value of plus one million, whereas his gold isn't even in teams, right? So they made him way more usable, and he's a fan favorite too because he performs well in real life. So I really like what they did with this promotion, and I think the team selection is pretty good, and I'm excited for Team 2 tomorrow. What about you? Yeah, so I like the concept a lot. Um, I didn't... I So you have a point here. Probably they are trying to slow down the, the high-rating cards, not to mm -hmm. be very high-rated uh at least for now uh, i don't really like the fact that they are pushing promos for two weeks with yep. team splits uh for two weeks but i can understand that uh they need to have some hype around uh, around the same promo i have a question here for sure. you you know me i have a bag of questions every <laughs> time uh, what do you think about the prices about this uh, for these players? Because from, from my end, some of them look quite expensive. I, I understand why they are expensive, but what do you think about them? So it's interesting. Something that relates heavily to price is how weighted they are in packs, meaning uh, like what percentage you get for packing one. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but EA has been totally messing around with pack weights this year, and that's not like a... They have to they have to attribute a certain pack weight to cards. So that's not a theory. It's just proof. I mean, cards have a certain percentage of coming out. They're not going to drop Messi's and Ronaldo's in every pack, and it's the same thing with here. But uh, the day that these guys released, they were supplied like crazy. I mean, this Costa here, a 400K, he was a 500K at the time. He had 20 pages of supply within 30 minutes. So... And, that... and let's let's maybe... Sorry to, to interrupt you there, but let mm -hmm. maybe talk a bit about what happened during release day because sure. not everybody went on the market. <laughs> yeah, you guys might remember, but on Friday, so many people tried to get on the game at the same time, which they should have. We, we, we got a really good objective card. Uh, Weekend League was happening. One of the first big promotions of the year was happening. So, so many people rushed to get on their console and get on the game uh, that the servers completely crashed. And it wasn't just like an interim issue. It was... Uh, the servers had crashed for around, I think it was eight hours they ended up being down, and it led yeah. to some complete chaos on the market. The market didn't move normally. These cards had a really weird supply because people didn't open packs, and by the time the market finally came alive again, it was so late in the UK that many just had went to bed. So it was just a mess, and uh, we're like you guys. We were uh, really disappointed in EA and that they can continue to do that because this happens every year on big days. It's like Black Friday on foot miss type days they're notorious for servers crashing so they need to do something to be able to handle more volume especially when they do things like release content on the dot every time so everyone sprints on at that exact minute yeah um so yeah i kind of messed with the market there was tons of supply on day one but my point was ever since then these cards aren't super heavily supplied in my opinion i really think they're more rare than people think um 
And some of them look look pretty good to me. I like Ocampos a lot. He seems to hold a really good value. If someone told me this card would be 100k looking at his stats, I wouldn't necessarily agree because he doesn't look great. He He's just three star, three star. Mm -hmm. um, but what you guys need to realize and what I realize is that there's really no right wings in this game. Like, period. Um, people are using Lucas a lot um, for their Premier League teams or Adama if they have Spanish or a cheaper Prem team. But other than those two, there's not a ton of those mid-range 100k, 75k, 200k cards. And he fits that niche and he's one of the few in La Liga other than Messi. So I like that. Um, Laporte, he would do a lot better, but we also just got a Kyle Walker in form recently, and then we got Joe Gomez in form actually this week, so I don't love him as much because of those two cards. Yeah. Um, Lazari looks good. If you guys want to throw Lazari in your club around this price, I don't know what he is on Xbox, but this is really, really cheap. He's like one of the few right wings, uh, right mids in the Serie A, com uh, comparatively to inform Lozano so I like that a lot I think that's really cheap for the price just because there's not many in that league um Lorente I don't like because his stat boost isn't good he seems really overpriced to me <laughs> I I mean if you look at his stats compared to gold they don't look great Andre's yeah. interesting I like him especially with Renato Sanchez inform being extinct there's not that many uh league one options for that center mid and he actually got has some really good stats I was checking this out with someone in discord and um, what they buffed makes him quite good because his agility, balance, and reactions are so high, and he's got 95 stamina. Like he's got really key uh, CDM stats for me that I think many people would look for, and he's 5'11". So personally, I think that's a pretty good buy around like 62, 63k if you can get him around 70k on Xbox. Is I he, like that is one. He, uh, is he a strong link to Renato Sanchez? Ah, uh, yeah, he would be then. Yep, yeah. he would be, and then he also has Yetter. So. Yeah, yeah, he links some players that are a little harder to link, and then, of course, he links with that Mukiele objective, and any of mm -hmm. Mukiele objective links did the best this Thursday, actually, like center backs that link to him, guys, like Lingle, uh, Varane, those guys did amazing this week because so many people are using that free Mukiele this early, so, this early, so, yeah, those did, those cards did really well today, but overall... I, I see some of these guys rising out of packs, but keep in mind, it, it depends a lot what comes in team two, right? Like, if we get a really good uh, right wing, that's going to limit Ocampos' rise because right now he's just one of the few, and the more we get, the less he holds value. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I see. So what I see from this promo is that they've put in not a lot of, let's say, very hyped players, so mm -hmm. we don't have already, let's say, an Mbappe or a Neymar, you know, you yep. know, the players which would sell a lot of packs, but probably that it's something yep. that awaits for us in the next months. Sure. But I'm really I'm really also curious about Team 2. And you mentioned that Mukiele card. That was an interesting addition for, uh, for let's say, uh, ultimate team yep. objectives because you don't need to play for him in rivals. So that's a big, uh, a big yep. uh, go for, uh, for, uh, for EA on that. Did you complete him, Florian? Actually, I was thinking about doing it, mm -hmm. doing him, but uh, I, I've quit. I, I said that those are, let's say, <laughs> too many games to play in friendlies. Yeah. Uh, so how the system is built now, guys? Uh, if you are not playing on a Friday, if you're not playing Thursday and Friday, and you're only playing like Saturday and Saturday, mm -hmm. a weekend league, yeah. uh, you kind of finish all your uh, rivals games because the 30 weekend league games count for rival points or so so there is no not really a reason to play rivals from monday to to thursday till rewards mm -hmm. so that's a bummer because you don't really have something else to do but ea dropped this mukiele card yep. for you to play in uh, fat friendlies and you can do his objectives there and get this card, let's say, for free just by playing the game. But I personally, I don't really want to play there. So probably I will skip him. Uh, he has very good stats. Uh, yeah. Foot Crunch probably would play him as a <laughs> center back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's good, but not good enough to, to spend my time uh, getting him. Yeah, looking at his stats, it looks like a good free card, like for those people rocking Road to Glory teams or even a Bundesliga team. And the big issue with the Bundesliga is just there's not many other options, right? It's either 
uh, Mukiele, whose gold card was one of the most used right backs in that league already, or yeah. Mbabu. Those are like literally the only two options right now. So I think a lot of people are doing him for that reason because there's just such a lack of options. So it's actually a great card to put in from EA because so many people would want that from uh, if they run like Bundesliga. But he's really lacking some of those big defensive stats. Um, yeah. But yeah, he has good height, good jumping. Uh, great speed, but it's just those defensive stats that are really lacking. So personally, I'd play him as an out, uh, like a right back, not a center back, because I think these are more key at center back, especially with like the AI stuff this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've heard mixed mix things about him, but I think it's a great free card and a great int- introduction to objectives. I know a lot of people were a little bit more pleased with the system this year. So ju- just to add a comment here, Jake, uh, you know me, guys. If you if you watch this uh, series uh, also during FIFA 20, uh, I was doing a lot of objective cards and a lot of a lot of SBC players. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, until now, I didn't do any SBC for a player SBC, and I only have uh, Diego Jota from uh, player objectives. And I did him because I I've watched him play for Liverpool and uh, Portugal, and I saw he has some potential to get yeah, some. Yeah. Uh, to get some informs but other than that no no player sbcs and no season objectives until now for me i mm. said better invest that, that time in some in something else and for the sbcs better better save those coins for something better yep yeah and that's a smart decision i know we talked about that earlier to start the year too but um yeah it's just about really knowing what you're going to use and not going to use you don't have to grind every single objective you don't have to complete every single sbc there's already been a good amount that i feel like people are just doing now because they're getting some untradeables you know like from rivals or yeah. weekend league or whatever and they're just like oh i have i have 485 so this isn't that much money i'll do it <laughs> and people get that train of thought a lot but to me there's been like really few sbcs that would be like in your team for a while so far um so just be picky and know guys that icon sbcs are returning so just know that if you're saving those untradeables they're probably going to get you a lot further towards those icons and these uh random player sbcs that you might not use that long and also guys i'm i'm rocking a a very cheap so i'm playing only weekend league because if i'm playing weekend league i don't have any reason to play rivals no more so i'm rocking a very cheap squad I'm trying to fit uh, some untradeable players, so I've got Ter Stegen untradeable, which was a big uh, hit, and uh, also Sane on the left and uh, Adama on the right. These mm-hmm. are untradeable in my team, and because I have Adama on the right, I've bought uh, Jesus Navas, who, who's Spanish and links oh, my yeah. uh, my La Liga center backs, and Jesus Navas is quite good. I don't I don't see an, a reason now to upgrade him to Mukiele, maybe in the in the future, who knows. Sure. Yeah, and it's, like I said, I think it's just more so for free because of the grind. Maybe people are using yeah. him creatively as a center back. But, yeah, most of all, I'm happy that people were a little bit more pleased with the new system and uh, wanting to try it out. So I did I did enjoy that. Uh, we did get yeah, a team and of... Also, and also, he, he's French, so that helps a lot, even if he's from Bundesliga. He's French and he he helps a lot. Totally, we did get a new team of the week yesterday too. Um, yep. The players are pretty much highlighted on my screen. The top four: Paulinho, Gomez, Zaha, and Valverde. So if you guys have opened your red picks or haven't yet, we hope that you get them or did get them because <laughs> they're quite yeah, good I, set I've of cards. Opened, I've opened the uh, red player picks and I've got two eighty twos who I uh, don't really know. I'm sure a <laughs> lot of people can relate to you, Florian. So <laughs> I'm sure you're not alone. Um, Taliska guys actually got completed way more heavily than I thought. I know his name carries a ton of weight in FIFA, right? Everyone has has heard that name. EA is like notorious for including them in promos or SBCs. So a lot of people really like this card and he got a more attacking boost. Um, so that's causing Paulinho to say super duper expensive and you can kind of creatively fit them in your team with Allen, uh, with Lucas, with Firmino. So I've seen some people doing that. And even there's this 75. Let me see if I can find him here. There was this new team of the week release that's like a 75 overall. Um, I'll have to find it in a second. But he's Brazilian and he's got like 95 pace. And that would be kind of a fun little cheap team. Not that 
Paulino's super cheap, but he's like 9K, literally. Let's go, let's go to him here. Um, he links with that yeah. Matuidi if any of you guys did him. Um, but yeah, I looked at his stats and I kind of had to laugh because they're actually quite good. It's this guy right here, Sergio Santos. <laughs> and he's got four-star weak foot, I think. So a fun little oh, card okay. there. Uh, can, can you can you click on him? I want so guys, if you are uh, if you are listening on Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, we can you can also see uh, Jake's screen yeah. on YouTube. Uh, yeah. So I want I wanted to check his finishing. So his finishing is quite okay. Seven, uh, 78 is quite okay. Oh, so nice uh, nice addition for only nine k. I think uh, it's it's better than. Than more expensive players yeah kind of a fun like little cheap route i know everyone has their own team and obviously he's not yeah. getting used much he's discard but if you guys want to try him out he's discard so you could literally play discard and lose 100 coins you're good <laughs> you're good to go lose a few hundred coins just for fun um any any advice here on this uh, team of the week jake regarding uh, maybe something to put in your in your club or or how would you feel? Would should we expect? Should we wait for tomorrow's promo release to to get some supply? How should we move further? Good question. So first off, guys, I I will give you this general advice, which should be super helpful. These cards will probably be cheapest on Saturday because no one is looking to buy them that early or uh, Sunday morning. It's just they they've been out for a few days then, and not many people are looking for them as investment. And then on the Sunday at, or Sunday, Monday for you guys uh, at Squad Battle Rewards, it seems like people start to look to invest in them actually. So they push up in price. That actually happened with Delaney this week as well. So uh, Saturday or Sunday is buy time. For the, this team, I don't love it. The ones that I like best out of packs is actually Gomez because of, excuse me, what Kyle Walker did. Kyle mm -hmm. Walker went from 400 in packs and now he's sitting around 570K to my knowledge. So. That's an absolutely massive rise. I know he has more pace, but Gomez is super loved in this FIFA. His gold card is one of the most used in the Premier League. So I really like him going out of packs, really, no matter what he costs. And then this Zaha is super loved in FIFA, too, and he does have the five-star skills. He's a super agile, kind of fast-style player. So as you see, he's holding a really high price, and that's because people love him. So I do like those two going out of packs the best. This Valverde would need to come down more, in my opinion. I think he's pretty darn high. Um, and then this Kimmich too, his upgrade's pretty poor. Regarding what you said about like what to put in your club and things like that, I'm not a huge fan of it this early, guys. I just feel like it's a little bit early for me to start getting prepared for like icon SBCs and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, you could throw one in your club, but you might have to wait two, three, four weeks still. So that's why I'm not, it's not my favorite because you can make more if you have those coins available in the interim. That's called opportunity cost. So if you have hundreds of thousands of coins tied up in players like uh, David Silva, Guerrero, Ricardo Escaio, like if you have them sitting in your club doing nothing for weeks, you could use that coin and coins and multiply it in the meantime. So I think we're a little bit early there. I think it's a super safe look if you are sitting on like millions and you don't know what to do with them. But I don't think that's many of us. Yeah, exactly. And and I wanted here just to make a small joke. So Zaha is 250k and the guy from uh, Brazil who plays in MLS is 9k mm -hmm. and you don't see a very big difference in their uh, in their stats, but of course Premier League and maybe that dribbling and five star weak foot for for uh, for Zaha. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of name recognition too. Mm -hmm. uh, so going going further, let's say in the last ten minutes of the of the show for yep. today, Jake, I want to yep. touch on two topics. You choose you, which one you want Ooh, to, to tackle first. Sure. Uh, first of all, um, second team of the uh, rule breakers, so team two. Yep. Uh, what would we expect in terms of when when to when to go in those players? I know you cannot compare it with last week because we had the problems with the servers, yep. but maybe you've seen a, already a pattern. And second thing, what are, let's say, the, the best opportunities to invest, uh, not necessarily names, but let's say days in which to invest for, uh, for rewards for next week? For th okay, so for the rule breakers, guys, I love trading with new cards on the first day they came out. The... The first team, like Florian said, that had like no real dynamic to it because of how messed up the market is. Um, 
like there was no really rhyme or reason to why cards fell or they didn't and it was impossible to read as a trader guys because i literally couldn't access the market myself so i didn't know how many were coming on i didn't know how many people were buying uh, eventually cards just expired and new ones couldn't get on the market so that's why they went up so much so it was really tricky it wasn't even a normal pattern um but I love buying sometimes cards that are priced undervalued in that first hour of a new promotion. And that's just something you have to gauge intuitively. Uh, and you can make a lot of coins that way. Um, like Camaro, this is an example from week one, although it was a little obscure. Like we said, he went from 60K to like 80K in that first day because he was a little undervalued for his supply and for the first day. Um, I also like trading them overnight. A lot of times they get really, really high during uh, kind of like these hours right now, like 9 to 11 p.m. UK, and then they drop um, from like 2 to 5 a.m. UK just because there's a lack of buyers. Everyone's sleeping at that time. So uh, like 2 to 5 a.m. UK is a great time to buy in general and definitely a great time to buy new release cards. Um, regarding Thursday flips, uh, looks like one of the best buy days right now is like Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes, you could definitely buy earlier. Uh, like even Sunday night and be okay probably. But again, we're going to use that phrase opportunity cost because if you buy that early, you're going to be holding them a long, long time, right? So if you buy if you buy these cards on Sunday night and hold till Thursday, you better be making a lot of profit because your coins have been tied up for a really long while. So I prefer to buy Tuesday or Wednesday uh, and even take slightly less profit, but also not to hold as long. That's That's what I prefer. And, and also, guys, you need to remember here, if you buy Sunday night or Monday morning, let's say, uh, you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, for EA to release something that could uh, put in danger your investments. Let's say they release a player SBC mm -hmm. who replaces a, a player exactly. you invested in. Uh, they release some SBCs who uh, get a lot of supply on the market. Um, so there, there's a, a small risk uh, because you are investing based on what EA does and uh, you never know what EA does, right? You're exactly right, Florian. And it's just, you can get really screwed. Like let's say you buy a center mid that's French, like a Pogba. And then the next day you get a new center mid French um, SBC and everyone starts selling their Pogba to complete it. So you can get kind of burnt on that. So that's why I like doing it late as well. And you can trade in the meantime and make small profits and then invest a big lump sum before rewards. That's what I did on Tuesday. We got UCL marquee matchups and there was a good amount of supply on the market. So I actually bought a ton of Martial and a ton of Ling Lei. Um I got Ling Lei, It's around like 75,000, like mm -hmm. as little as 70,000 up to like 75, 76. And I sold him today. He was upwards of 90 six thousand uh, coins earlier so it was like 15 to 20k profit on some cards and i had 37 of them so that was really good profit whoa that's a big profit yeah yeah we made over a million coins today it was a good day and then martial i got him for 125 during that supply and he sold at one he sold all the way up towards 155 today so it was really really good day for flips and we read the market right and just so you guys know this card went up a ton and I just want you want you guys to hear my thoughts on this because not many people yeah. invested in him. This card went up a ton because he links with Mukiele for one thing. That's the big reason. But reason number two is because there, there actually wasn't very many investors on him. And that's simply because last week he didn't do so well, whereas a lot of cards did amazing. He didn't do so well. He only went up. Well, he went up a good chunk, but he could have gone up a lot more. I think Koshielny's SBC was still out by then too so people yeah. were not as uh, lenient to pick up this Langley um, so he went up a ton I mean he went up 20k pretty much in one day so it was a really really good flip and it just you have to know people are using that free card they all got and if you piece that together you'd make really good profit I've uh, I've realized I didn't ask you about you you talked about uh, UCL marquee matchups mm -hmm. I didn't ask you about uh, you know, we we usually have got those uh, UCL SBC with UCL rares and non-rares mm -hmm. supply during the uh, Champions League uh, weeks. Uh, I, I feel like we didn't get it this week, right? No, we uh, didn't. I mean, we got 
um, UCL marquee matchups, but they didn't even require blues, and then we didn't yeah. get anything that delivered them either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a little bit strange, I think, uh, from EA. But but this year they have Champions League every week, mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know. They they have a lot of they have plenty of time to to supply us with those. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I think they didn't ask for them this week because the first week they were pretty much extinct, so they pretty much haven't had enough time on their market. Whereas if they asked for them again, they would go extremely expensive. So. From like a casual player's perspective and from just a SBC completion standpoint, that was probably a good decision. Also, you would have seen them increase exponentially again. I know it made mm -hmm. some investors <laughs> angry because they had invested in them, but you're never guaranteed on an investment like that. You're dependent on EA, and as you see there, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, guys, and I don't know if you noticed lately, and uh, that would be my last, uh, let's say, topic. Maybe you have something else also, Jake. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you notice lately, during marquee matchups and not really, uh, so marquee matchups for Champions League and marquee matchups for regular, uh, let's say, league games, they didn't really require exact mm -hmm. players from exact teams. So there was not a lot of uh, room there to, to make a lot of profits from those investments. Yeah, basically, guys, EA has started to remove some very specific requirements, so it's harder to profit directly from it. So in the past, with UCL marquee matchups, they'd ask for like two cards sometimes even from each team, and that would make most teams rise dramatically in price. So we, um, we saw that with PSG versus Manchester United, they did ask for it, but since they didn't re release blues at the time, they were hard yeah. to complete. Um, but... If they ask for that requirement, cards are going to rise a lot. And then this week you saw they did it in a way where it was literally impossible to profit. Because, I mean, sure, you could have some non-rares and stuff that went up. But you, if you bought the specific teams, they didn't do anything. And then if you bought the blues, they didn't do anything. So <laughs> they're making it harder to capitalize off those specific team requirements. And like I always say, I don't think EA is trying to spite traders. But... Keep in mind, for casual players and even for all of us, it makes the SBC a lot cheaper to do. So that's kind of a good thing in a way, too. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, let's let's see what uh, what EA does uh, during the next days. I know people were expecting some Halloween content today that didn't <laughs> really came. I mean, it came, but who cares about badges and uh, yeah. UFOs and those stuff? Um, yeah, so let's see. Let's see what's next. I know for sure we are preparing uh, some great content. We saw that with uh, Inaki Williams SBC, who had uh, a player pick. You could have chose between uh, improving his shooting and improving his dribbling. Mm -hmm. So that was a nice addition. But let's see what's uh, next. Yeah, someone had a really cool concept, and I'll just share it briefly. Um, on tw Twitter, I actually retweeted it. If you guys saw it, but it was a pl it was a another pick SBC called like trick or treat or trick or feed or something. And yeah. it, you got to choose an upgrade between a five star skill and a five star weak foot for a player. So I thought that was an amazing fun concept. And those are both so important in FIFA that I feel like people would have a hard time picking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. M myself, I'm not such a good skiller, so I would go for the weak foot, but I yep. know a lot of, a lot of people are going for the, for the dribbling stat and for the for the skill moves. Exactly. Okay, guys. So for for this week, I think uh, we covered pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. We had a review about what what happened this week. Uh, some good ideas for when to invest and what to buy. You would see. You will see after listening to our podcast that we have a pattern. Like you need to invest in some days because yep. uh, rewards days are coming, or uh, for some team of the week or some promo cards and so on you don't forget to follow to follow us everywhere yep. jake is very very active also on uh, twitter instagram so uh, keep uh, keep uh, keep you up to date there yeah so stay safe until next time thanks guys